recording. Hello, everyone. We just finished chapter 18, and as promised, we've got a blind of 19 coming. I'm scared. <laughs> what is going to happen? We'll find out. But first, hello and welcome to the No One Asked You podcast. For this particular series, I am joined by my wonderful co-host, That Darn Kitta. Dorcas and I are both going into the story completely new with almost no knowledge of the story or world. Each segment, we intend to cover what happens in each new chapter and discuss our experience along the way. Hold on to your butts, because this is Ascension Unleashed, a blind read-through, and today we'll be covering Chapter 19! Chapter 19! Blind, blind. Blind, blind. If only I had passed over Alendi when looking for an assistant all those years ago. Okay, more regret, Quan. We get it. Yeah. Start only, telling us only, about the only. deepness. Yeah, okay, we were done with that. If only, if only, cool. The thing is, the world did not turn out that way. Now what? Yep. Sazed unclasped his final steel mind. He held it up, the bracelet-like band of metal glistening in the red sunlight. To another man, it might seem valuable. To Sazed, it was now just another empty husk, a simple steel bracelet. He could refill it if he wished, but for the moment he didn't consider the weight worth carrying. With a sigh, he dropped the bracelet. It fell with a clank, tossing up a puff of ash from the ground. Five months of storing, of spending every fifth day drained of speed, my body moving as if impeded by a sick molasses. Now it's all gone. Five months. Okay, but did he make it? How far did you go? Yeah, where are we? Yep. I mean, I'm assuming he didn't make it all the way there because he's mm -hmm. dropping it for exactly, more yeah. yeah, ease of travel. But how close are we? And geez, a, a bracelet's weight? Wow. Is 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 that much of a, um, you know, something that could help? You drop that bracelet, it's not even worth keeping? Okay. Sheesh. But, you know, whatever you need because this is a hurry. And also just thinking about, we have a bit more of a description of how you would store speed. It's like you just basically live your life a bit like a sloth for a day. Every fifth day, he was just slopping around. Um, <laughs> yep. Sorry. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay. The loss had purchased something valuable. In a mere six days, using steel mines regularly, he had traveled the equivalent of six weeks worth of walking. Damn. Yeah. But that begs the question, how far away were you? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, how far do we have? Hopefully we know. Six because weeks we... worth of walking. Jeez. According to his cartography copper mind, Luthadel was now a little over a week away. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So do we have one more um, one more metal man? Do we? Do we have a steel man? I don't think so. I'm afraid he doesn't. <laughs> but we'll no, we have to sit for a week? I mean, sit as in we have to sit with normal speed. For a week. Yeah, I'm just so ready for him to get to there. Make... Yeah, hurry up! <laughs> Sazed felt good about the expenditure. Perhaps he'd overreacted to the deaths he'd found in the little southern village. No, no, Sazed, you didn't! <laughs> Perhaps there was no need for him to hurry, but he'd created the steel mine to be used. Yes, that's what you need them for. Don't just hoard. Don't be that, that kind of gamer. It just... <laughs> keeps all your stuff and then never uses it yes and people need to see the charcoal drawing so even if you weren't freaking out about mm -hmm. the deaths you have a good reason to use it yes and where else will it be more safe than luthadel in ellen's kingdom where everyone can read it yeah exactly that's that's the best from a keeper's point of view well a, a rebellious keeper's point of view that's mm -hmm. that's where it should go he hefted his pack, which was much lighter than it had been. Though many of his metal mines were small, they were heavy in aggregate. He decided to discard some of the less valuable or less full ones as he ran, like the steel bracelet, which he left sitting in the ash behind him as he went on. He was definitely in the central dominance now. He'd passed the ash mounts Doriel and Faliest, the latter of which, a tall solitary peak with a cut-off blackened top, had vanished below the southern horizon days ago. The landscape had grown flat, the trees changing from patchy brown pines. Ah, I was right. Pines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Called it-ish. Yeah, no, good. 
to the willowy white aspens common around Luthadel. The aspens rose like bones growing from the black soil, clumping their ashen white bark scarred and twisted. They, Salsad halted. I'm scared. He stood near the central canal, one of the main routes to Luthadel. It was empty of boats at the moment. Travelers were rare these days, even more rare than they had been during the final empire, for bandits were far more common. Sazed had outrun several groups of them during his hurried flight to Luthadel. No, solitary travelers were rare. Armies were far more common, and judging from the several dozen trails of smoke he saw rising ahead of him, he had run afoul of one. It stood directly between him and Luthadel. Okay, time. Where the, the, is this telling us where he is in time? Because, hmm. Well, at least he knows that there are armies converging on Luthadel now. Yeah, but is this a third army or is this Set's army or something? I don't remember where Set's army came from, which direction or whatever. So is this a third right. army that that is now? I, there's two that are in Luthadel, and this is the third one. Or are we in the past and he has come upon? Say so sets one or making um, its way to one. Luthadel as yeah. well. Yeah. Mm. And then oh, it means he wouldn't have been able to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. He thought quietly for a moment, flakes of ash beginning to fall lightly around him. This also means he'll have to like travel through army territory for a week. Mm -hmm. How is he? he's got to get out of the path of an army, so yeah. Yeah, this doesn't help. <laughs> it was midday. If that army had scouts, Sazed would have a very difficult time getting around it, and since his steel mines were now empty, he wouldn't be able to run from pursuit. Yet an army within a week of Luthadel. Whose was it? And what threat did it pose? His curiosity, that of a scholar, provided him to seek a vantage from which to study the troops. Finn and the others could use any information he gathered. Oh, sweet, sweet Sazed. <laughs> I think they know. I, I don't know. If this is a third army, they don't know. That's true. But if this was in the past... Mm -hmm. Decision made, Sazed located a hill with a particularly large stand of aspens. He dropped his pack at the base of a tree and pulled out an iron mine and began to fill it. He felt the familiar sensation of decreased weight and he easily climbed to the top of the thin tree. His body was now light enough that it didn't take much strength to pull himself upward. Cool. Neat. <laughs> Hanging from the very tip of the tree, Sazed tapped his tin mind. The edges of his view fuzzed as always, but with the increased vision, he could make out details about the large group that was settled in a hollow before him. He was right about it being an army. He was wrong about it being made up of men. Whoa. Is this the, what are they called? Uh, Kolos. Kolos, oh my gosh. Okay, mm. who's in control of the Kolos? This is the third one. Oh. oh no, oh no. Here we go. Oh, but hey, this means we finally get to, See. if it's Kolos, we get. Mm. Yeah, what are they made of? Okay, let's go, it's on the next page, which is just so infuriating. I can't even look down and find it. <laughs> okay, okay, final bets. What do you think the Kolos are? I have been convinced from your suggestions that they are a kind of race. It, it's not a kind of race of man. It's they are a kind of creature, but they are an army. So they are small. Obviously, now we have this. But they, the Kolos, remember my first thing of the Kolos was they were big monsters. But now right. this they're, they're actually more numerous, like goblins. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So I think, like, when I very first heard the term, I was imagining, like, tanks and, like, mm -hmm. robot people. Uh, and then mm -hmm. a little later on, I think I had come to, like, a, a goblin-type mm -hmm. situation. So I'm thinking goblins or orcs. Yeah, something like uh, that. Yeah. By the forgotten gods, Sazed whispered, so shocked that he nearly lost his grip. The army was organized in only the most simplistic and primitive way. There were no tents, no vehicles, no horses, just hundreds of large cooking fires, each ringed with figures. And those oh, figures we're getting were orcs. A... Sorry, we're getting orcs, it seems like. And those figures were of a deep blue. They varied mm -hmm. greatly in size. Some were only five feet tall. Others were lumbering hulks of 10 feet or more. 
They were all the same species, Sazed Nu, Kolos. Whoa, here we go. How are you feeling about that? S goblins and orcs from the sound yeah. of it. Five feet and ten feet? That is a yeah. large difference. And they're blue. I like the color blue. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, I like blue too. Mm hmm. Hmm. But very concerning because I, yeah. I don't think I don't think Straff and I don't think Set. Yep. Third so army. Who, do, who does control? Are are they they're primitive? They Someone's yeah. who's pulling the strings? Yep. Which is great that we have Sazed to figure that out and then warn them. Yeah. A week out. Sazed's, Sazed just has to hurry up. <laughs> and he's got no more speed. No. The suspense the creature, is killing me. I love this. Me too. The creatures, though similar to men in base form, never stopped growing. Oh. Cool. They simply continued to get bigger as they aged until their hearts could no longer support them. Then they died, killed by their body's own growth imperative. That's so cool. That's a cool yeah. concept. Yeah, very... I can imagine growing so big that you just stop being able to move. Yeah. So the bigger they are, the older they are, which are you just, you get so old, so big that, you know, it happens to bodybuilders. Basically your heart takes strain when you, when you build your body. So I guess that's what Brandon Sanderson went with. He's like, you know, what if you just never stop growing? But before that happened, they got very large and very dangerous. Saza dropped from the tree, making his body light enough that he hit the ground softly. He hurriedly searched through his copper mines. When he found the one he wanted, he strapped it to his upper left arm, then climbed back up the tree. He searched an index quickly, somewhere he'd taken notes on a book about the Kolos. He'd studied it, trying to decide if the creatures had a religion. He'd had someone repeat the notes back to him so he could store them in the copper mine. He had the book memorized, too, of course, but placing so much information directly in his mind would ruin the... Zer, he thought, recovering the notes. He tapped them from the copper mind, filling his mind with knowledge. Most Kolos bodies gave out before they reached 20 years of age. The more ancient creatures were often a mass of 12 feet in height, with stocky, powerful bodies. Few Kolos lived that long, and not only because of heart failure, their society, if it could be called that, was extremely violent. Who would have thunk? Yeah, especially if they don't live past 20, when you think about how stupid <laughs> kids are. Yeah. So, interesting species we have here. And we know that the Lord Ruler was able to control them to a degree. Yeah, how? Presumably through sheer force of power. But who's doing that now? Are they? Is this just like a roving war yeah. band? Maybe they, they don't care they? about Luthadel. They just see yeah. two armies and they're like, let's go fight. Yeah, exactly. They're just, they are primitive and just go for fighting. That's it. Very orc-like. Yeah. And so these guys seem more orc than goblin, which mm -hmm. I was leaning more toward goblin in my prediction, I think. But I'm they're down. Not this is a, no, these are a very neat. Neat twist on the orc, though. I like mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Excitement suddenly overcoming apprehension. Sazed tapped Tin for vision again, searching through the thousands of blue humanoids, trying to get visual proof of what he'd read. It wasn't hard to find fights. Scuffles around the fires seemed common, and interestingly, they were always between Kolos of nearly the same size. Sazed magnified his view even further, gripping the tree tightly to overcome the nausea and got his first good look at a Kolos. It was a creature of smaller size, perhaps six feet tall. Small? Six feet tall? Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. Sure. Jeez, saws it. Wait, I have to go back and look at how big he said that they generally get. Uh, massive 12 feet. Okay, so half the size of a big one. Mm -hmm. It was a creature of smaller size, perhaps six feet tall. It was man-shaped with two arms and legs, though its neck was hard to distinguish. It was completely bald. Oh, you know what that makes me think of from Doctor Who? Oh, gosh, I'm forgetting the what they're called. But they look like potatoes. <laughs> Potato. Um, <laughs> they're very soldiery. And they've got, like, the juggernaut helmets. And I don't think they have necks. Interesting. Anyway. I also didn't imagine them with hair. 
I guess it just hmm. was because because it just wasn't described already. Yeah. Um, it just immediately I hadn't that was just a detail that didn't come in, but I just bald seems to be exactly what they should be. <laughs> Wait a second, kidding. You like bald men, right? I do. <laughs> I don't know. No, no. Do they have beards? <laughs> then maybe I can like them. <laughs> you it need was... a beard. <laughs> it was completely bald. The oddest feature was its blue skin, which hung loose and folded. The creature looked like a fat man might, had all his fat been drained away, leaving the stretched skin behind. Ooh. Yeah, never mind on that last comment. <laughs> I <think>. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and the skin didn't seem to be connected very well. Around the creature's red blood drop eyes, the skin sagged, revealing the facial muscles. The same was true around the mouth. The skin sagged a few inches below the chin, the lower teeth and jaw completely exposed. Oh, that beautiful. They yeah. got an underbite and everything. Yeah, very, very gross. I love it. I want one. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> It was a stomach-turning sight, especially for a man who was already nauseated. The creature's ears hung low, flopping down beside its jawline. Its nose was formless and loose, with no cartilage supporting it. Skin hung baggily from the creature's arms and legs, and its only clothing was a crude loincloth. Sazed turned, selecting a larger creature, one perhaps eight feet tall, to study. The skin on this beast wasn't as loose, but it still didn't seem to fit quite right. Its nose twisted at a crooked angle, pulled flat against the face by an enlarged head that sat on a stumpy neck. The creature turned to leer at a companion, and again the skin around its mouth didn't quite fit. The lips didn't close completely, and the holes around the eyes were too big, so they exposed the muscles beneath. Okay, but do you think this blue is like a deep blue or like a corpse blue? Because they kind of sound like corpses to me, a little bit. Uh, I'm imagining deep blue. Okay. It would deep blue would contrast more with the red eyes. Mm. Yeah. Like a person wearing a mask made of skin, Sazed thought, trying to push away his disgust. So their body continues to grow, but their skin doesn't? It's interesting. Uh, yeah. The bigger they get, the more they grow into their skin. Yeah, it makes sense. I was thinking that. Yeah. His thought was confirmed as a massive ten-foot-tall beast of a colos wandered into the group. Smaller creatures scattered before this newcomer, who thumped up to the fire where several horses were roasting. This okay, but now, like, I really want to speak to one of them. Like, I want to know <laughs> how they intelligent they, they are. Yeah, how, yeah. How, what is their existence like? What do they think mm -hmm. like? Hmm. It seems very this primitive, one, but still yeah. want to know. Yeah. Because clearly they, they still exist, they still propagate, they still carry on. So how how's, how does that work? Are there males and females or mm. do they just like Ping. become two and then four and then eight? <laughs> yeah, they just multiply. This largest creature's skin was pulled so tight it was beginning to tear. The hairless blue flesh had ripped around the eyes at the edges of the mouth and around the massive chest muscles. Okay, so now I'm imagining super mutants from fallout new vegas uh, you would wouldn't you, <laughs> you and i'll fallout. send you a picture mm -hmm. more specifically the nightkin are what i'm mm -hmm. imagining anyway the hairless blue flesh had ripped around the eyes at the edges of the mouth and around the massive chest muscles so i said could see little trails of red blood dripping from the rips that's got to be painful <sighs> even where the skin wasn't torn it was pulled taut the nose and ears were so flat they were almost indistinguishable from the flesh around them. In that instant, Sazed's study didn't seem so academic. Kolos had come to the central dominance, creatures so violent and uncontrollable that the Lord Ruler had been forced to keep them away from civilization. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Ow. Sazed extinguished his tin mind, welcoming the return to normal vision. He had to get to Luthadel and warn the others. If they... Sazed froze. One problem with enhancing his vision was that he temporarily lost the ability to see close up, so it wasn't odd that he hadn't noticed the Kolos patrol surrounding his Aspens. Oh no. <laughs> so help me, if they take Sawzed before he gets to share his no. knowledge... 
and they don't think that they, they don't take okay i don't feel like they take they they kill no hostages can he make himself so light that he can just kind of hop from treetop to treetop <laughs> can he do that <laughs> i mean i i think he would by the forgotten gods he held firm to the tip of the tree, thinking quickly. Several Kolos were already pushing their way into the stand. If he dropped to the ground, he'd be too slow to escape. As always, he wore a pewter mind. He could easily become as strong as ten men and maintain it for a good amount of time. He could fight, perhaps. Yet the Kolos carried crude-looking but massive swords. Sazed's notes, his memory, and his lore all agreed. Kolos were very dangerous warriors. Strong as ten men or not, Sazed wouldn't have the skill to defeat them. Come down, called a deep slurred voice from below. Come down now. Sazed wow. looked down. They talk. They talk. But they, 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 I mean, they speak human. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so there's some intelligence and ability mm. to learn. Sazed looked down. A large colo, skin barely beginning to stretch, stood at the tree's base. It gave the aspen a shake. Come down now, the creature repeated. Those lips don't work very well. He sounds like a man trying to talk without moving his lips. He wasn't surprised that the creature could talk. His notes mentioned that, but he was surprised at how calm it sounded. I could run, he thought. He could keep to the tops of trees, perhaps cross the distance between patches of aspens by dropping his metal mines and trying to ride gusts of wind but it would be very difficult and very unpredictable. And he would have to... Wings, I'm just imagining winged squirrel saws it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> very funny. There's a part of me that hopes the Kolos are good. Yeah. Or... Let us just be wrong about them. Try talking to it. Be like, hey, I respect yeah. your culture. I would prefer not to come down. Please don't make me. <laughs> like, I it's want just, no trouble with yeah. you. I know I just said they don't take hostages. They just kill. I hope that I'm wrong. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it would be very difficult and very unpredictable. And he would have to leave his copper mines a thousand years of history behind. So, pewter mind ready in case he needed strength, Sazed let go of the tree. No, Sazed, see? Talk to it first. What are you doing? <laughs> At least try. Okay. So what, what do you want him to say? Like, what do you want? I'll let go if you don't hurt me kind of thing. Yeah, just be like, do I have your assurance that you won't hurt me? Or like, why yeah. do you want me to come down? <laughs> Converse. Okay. <laughs> the Kolos leader, Sazed could only assume that was what he was, watched Sazed fall to the ground with a red-eyed stare. The creature did not blink. Sazed wondered if it even could blink, its skin stretched as it was. Sazed plunked to the ground beside the tree, then reached for his pack. No! The Kolos snapped, grabbing the pack with an inhumanly quick swipe of the arm. It tossed the pack to another Kolos. I need that, Sazed said. I will be much more cooperative if- Quiet! The Kolos yelled with a rage so sudden that Sazed took a step back. <laughs> See, that's why you shouldn't have gone down, Sazed. You should have <laughs> said, only if you promise not to take my pack. Terracemen were tall, especially Terracemen eunuchs, and it was very disconcerting to be dwarfed by this beastly creature. Well over nine feet in height, its skin a blackish blue, its eyes the color of the sun at dusk, it loomed over Sazed and he cringed in spite of himself. Apparently that was the proper reaction, for the lead Kolos nodded and turned away. Come, it slurred, lumbering through the small aspen forest. The other Kolos, seven of them, followed. Saza didn't want to find out what would happen if he disobeyed. He chose a god, Duis, once said to watch over wearied travelers, and said a quick, silent prayer. Then he hurried forward, staying with the pack of Kolos as they walked toward the camp. At least they didn't kill me out of hand, Saza thought. I mean, I, I, that's what I thought they would do. I didn't think that. Well, but, it's not that I thought that it would happen. It's that I thought that that's the kind of people they were. The fact that they even spoke to him is interesting to me. I yeah. thought they would just attack. That's what I'm saying. Well, there's certainly some hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Just because they're primitive doesn't necessarily make them 
savages, although it's understandable that one might make that presumption. Mm. And and it seems like the Lord Ruler wanted people to have such a presumption. Yeah. And clearly, if they're here in the central dominance, they're being manipulated. We had that note earlier. So maybe they're taking them to some sort of leader. Mm. At least they didn't kill me out of hand, Sazed thought. He'd half expected that, considering what he'd read. Of course, even the books didn't say much. The Kolos had been kept separate from mankind for centuries. The Lord Ruler only called upon them in times of great martial need, to quell revolts, or to conquer new societies discovered on the inner islands. At those times, the Kolos had caused absolute destruction and slaughter, or so the histories claimed. Could all that have been propaganda? Sazed wondered. Maybe the Kolos aren't as violent as we assumed. Uh, I'm feeling it's yes and no. Agreed. That they, they, they have a society or whatever. Their motivations are a lot more complex than blood. But yeah, they are that violent. Their society is that violent. Agreed. Especially with the quiet, they yelled mm -hmm. with a rage so suddenly. I get the sense that they are short-tempered. Yeah. And and the fact that he cringed, like the, the correct response was cringing. Like that that's yeah. how you, you show I'm not threatening or whatever. They, they have a very animalistic way of very not very subtle way of communicating. Yeah. One of the Kolos beside Sazed howled in sudden anger. Sazed spun as the Kolos jumped at one of its companions. The creature ignored the sword on its back. Make an escape. This is your chance to escape, Sazed. The creature ignored mm, the sword. The pack on is important. Yeah. The pack is important and he's curious about them, so. Yeah. Doesn't have speed either. The creature ignored the sword on its back, instead punching his enemy's head with a blocky fist. The others stopped turning to watch the fight, but none of them seemed alarmed. Okay, no, here's what you do now if you're Sazed. You use the metal to put an end to the fight. Make them scared. Earn a place in the hierarchy. And impress them that way. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hoping that that would work. That 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 if you beat the strongest one, then they'll listen to you. But you don't know that yet. So. Yeah. The more you know. Sazed watched with growing horror as the aggressor proceeded to repeatedly pummel his enemy. The defender tried to protect himself, getting out a dagger and managing to score a cut on the aggressor's arm. The blue skin tore seeping bright red blood as the aggressor got his hands around his opponent's thick head and twisted. No, see, but what are the odds that they know about keepers? And Sazed literally grows in size and strength when he gives himself strength. So he could really mess with the Kolos's perception of him. It's all, but that's all very brash, okay? That's all very sudden. He's, he's being very measured in what's happening. So I, I see right. I see what I see your frustration, but I'm kind of like, you know what? His caution is I mean, understandable. I, I I suppose he doesn't have to do it right now, but I'm mm -hmm. saying that there are options. Yeah. And these are things you're considering. Yeah. Yes. This is if I were Sazed, what would mm -hmm. I consider? Yes, consider. I, I can I'm seeing that. I, I just know that he's taking his time to figure out what his what his options are. Yeah. There was a snap. The defender stopped moving. The aggressor removed the sword from his victim's back and strapped it on beside his own weapon, then removed a small pouch that was tied beside the sword. After that, he stood, ignoring the wound on his arm, and the group began to walk again. Okay, look, hear me out. Okay, Sazed is going to become the leader of the Kolos, and he's going to march the Kolos army <laughs> to Luthadel, and he will single-handedly take on Straff and Set and save the day. <laughs> and he will be the hero of ages and save the world. <laughs> Why not? Come on, every time I joke, it turns out to be true. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Sazed asked, shocked. What was that for? The wounded Kolos turned around. I hated him, he said. Move! The lead Kolos snapped at Sazed. Sazed forced himself to start walking. They left the corpse lying in the road. The pouches, he 
he thought, trying to find something to focus on beside the brutality. They all carry those pouches. The Kolos kept them tied to their swords. They didn't carry the weapons in sheaths. They were simply bound on their backs with leather straps, and tied to those straps were pouches. Sometimes there was only one, though the two largest creatures in the group each had several. They look like coin pouches, Sazed thought, but the Kolos don't have an economy. Perhaps they keep personal possessions in them? What would the beasts like these value? They entered the camp. There didn't appear to be sentries at the borders, but then why would guards be necessary? It would be very difficult for a human to sneak into this camp. A group of smaller... <laughs> just thinking of a human just trying not to stand out. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you're, your skin fits you, everything. It's just, yeah, you're, you're not the same species. It's very clear. And why would a human try and sneak in? <laughs> a group of smaller Kolos, the five-foot-tall ones, rushed forward as soon as the group arrived. The murderer threw his extra sword to one of them, then pointed into the distance. He kept the pouch for himself, and the small ones rushed off, following the road in the direction of the body. Burial detail? Saw said mm. one. I think they're going to eat him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Burial detail? Sazed wondered. He walked uncomfortably behind his captors as they penetrated the camp. Beasts of all sorts were being roasted over the fire pits, though Sazed didn't think any of them had once been human. In addition, the ground around the camp had been completely stripped of plant life, as if grazed by a group of particularly aggressive goats. Okay, so he would have seen, I'm sure with all those fights, he would have seen the actual colos if they were if they were cannibals so i retract my expectation me so they actually <laughs> will have a burial because you would see you would he, he would have noted that colos were also being eaten fair according to his copper mind that wasn't far from the truth colos could apparently subsist on practically anything they preferred meat but would eat any kind of plant even grass going so far as to pull it up by the roots some reports spoke of them eating dirt and ash, though Sazed found that difficult to believe. He continued to walk. The camp smelled of smoke, grime, and a strange musk that he assumed was Kolos' body odor. Some of the creatures turned as he passed, watching him with steady red eyes. It's like they only have two emotions, he thought, jumping as a fireside Kolos suddenly screamed and attacked a companion. They're either indifferent or enraged. What would it take to set them all off at once? And what kind of a disaster would they cause if that happened? He nervously revised his earlier thoughts. No, the Kolos had not been maligned. The stories he had heard of Kolos running wild from the farmost dominance, causing widespread destruction and death, were obviously true. Interesting. And that does make me wonder, okay, uh, can you emotionally element them? Hmm. Ooh, very interesting thought. Just riot there, riot a group, and there you've got chaos. Yeah. And imagine only being able to feel angry or indifferent. Mm -hmm. Great existence. Yeah. But something kept this group marginally reined in. The Lord Ruler had been able to control the Kolos, though no book explained how. Most writers simply accepted this ability as part of what had made the Lord Ruler God. The man had been immortal. Compared with that, other powers seemed mundane. Look, I'm telling you, he did some compounding thing where he gave himself extra muscles until he literally towered over all of the Kolos and they respected him for it. I bet <laughs> that is what happened. He, yeah, he, he has a, a way of, yeah, just getting to the top of the society. Okay. Yeah. However, his immortality was a trick, Saz had thought, simply a clever combination of ferrochemical and alimentic powers. Lord Ruler had been a normal man, albeit one with an unusual combination of abilities and opportunities. That being the case, how had he controlled the Kolos? There was something different about the Lord Ruler, something more than his powers. What he did at the Well of Ascension forever changed the world. Perhaps his ability to control the Kolos came from that. Sazed's captors ignored the occasional fights around fire pits. There didn't appear to be any female Kolos in the camp or if there were, they were indistinguishable from the males. Sazed did notice a Kolos corpse lying forgotten near one of the fires. It had been flayed, the blue skin ripped free. Mm, that's, that's great. Yeah. How could any society exist like this? 
His book said the Kolos bred and aged quickly, a fortunate situation for them considering the number of deaths he had already seen. Even so, it seemed to him that these species killed too many of its members to continue. Yet continue they did, unfortunately. The keeper in him believed strongly that nothing should be lost, that every society was worth remembering. The brutality of the Kolos camp, the wounded creatures who sat ignoring the gashes in their skin, the flayed corpses along the path, the sudden bellows of anger and subsequent murders tested this belief. Yeah, I should think so. <laughs> yeah. I'm scared. I, <laughs> I feel like they're taking him to their leader, right? Yes, but I, I, I want to, I'm so curious about how, this is the, the question that Sarset has, has posed for us, is how does this society work? How does it continue when, when it's based on just destruction? Yeah. I want to know more. His captors led him around a small hillock, and Sazed hesitated as he saw something very unexpected. A tent. Go, the lead Kolos said, pointing. Sazed frowned. There were several dozen humans outside the tent carrying spears and dressed like imperial guards. The tent was large, and behind it stood a line of boxy carts. Go, the Kolos yelled. Okay, human leader. How? Yeah. Imperial guards. Mm -hmm. Is this the remnants of the final empire? Mm -hmm. And and but but still, I want to know how humans of any kind, even elementals, are controlling them. What hold do they have over the Carlos? Carlos. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're gonna find another Inquisitor in there? <gasps> I don't know. Probably. Yeah. It seems like that would be a good thing to control them. Yeah, because if, if it's Imperial Guards, who's left to control the final empire or its remnants other than mm -hmm. an Inquisitor? Obviously not Marsh, but mm -hmm. one of the others. Sazed did as he was told. Behind him, one of the Kolos indifferently tossed Sazed's pack toward the human guards. The metal mines inside clinked together as they hit the ashy ground, causing Sazed to cringe. The soldiers watched the Kolos retreat with a wary eye, then one picked up the pack, Another leveled his spear at Sazed. Sazed held up his hands. I am Sazed, a keeper of Terrace, once steward, now teacher. I am not your enemy. Yes, well, the guard said, still watching the retreating Kolos. You're still going to have to come with me. May I have my possessions back? Sazed asked. This hollow appeared free of Kolos. Apparently the human soldiers wanted to keep their distance. The first guard turned to his companion, who was perusing Sazed's pack. The second guard looked up and shrugged. No weapons. Some bracelets and rings may be worth something. None of them are of precious metals, Sazed said. They are the tools of a keeper and are of little value to anyone but myself. Both guards were of standard central dominance coloring. Dark hair, light skin. The build and height of those who'd had proper nutrition as children. The first guard was the older of the two and was obviously in charge. He took the bag from his companion. We'll see what his majesty says. Ah, Sazed thought. Let us speak with him then. The guard turned, pushing aside the tent door and motioning for Sazed to enter. Sazed stepped from red sunlight into a functional, if sparsely furnished, tent room. This main chamber was large and contained several more guards. Sazed had seen perhaps two dozen so far. The lead guard walked forward and poked his head into a room at the rear. A few moments later, he waved Sazed forward and pulled aside the tent door. And at this point, I feel I should say that I'm literally using a paper to cover up each line <laughs> uh, so that I don't look ahead by mistake. Okay, I'll do the same. Because <laughs> are, are there any predictions on who this king would be? No, no predictions of who it would be. But I'm like, yeah, here we go. We got another king. This this war intensifies because we got more majesties all over the place. Good lord. Yeah, yeah. Sazed entered the second chamber. The lead guard walked forward and poked his head into a room at the rear. A few moments later, he waved Sazed forward and pulled aside the tent door. Sazed entered the second chamber. The man inside wore the trousers and suit jacket of a Luthadel nobleman. He was balding his hair reduced to a few struggling wisps, despite his youth. He stood, tapping the side of his leg with a nervous hand, and jumped slightly when Sazed entered. Sazed recognized the man. Chastes Lacal. Oh, oh hey. it's a friend, yes. 
I was wondering what happens to is he a friend if he's the king? I hope so. Yeah, that's true. He's not. And how but, does but, Justice of all people get control of the Kolos? Yeah, the but Lecol, it must be the the, the house somehow. Because I mean, we had we had Venture that that kind of controls the Atium. Maybe Lecol is Kolos, the Kolos house, basically. Um, oh, interesting. And Justice does not strike me so far with his body language as a very majestic majesty. So is he no. being propped up by uncles and whatever's? Yeah, what, what's what's his he, motivation? He's that very nervous personality. It's hard for me to believe that he can control the Kolos. Mm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Ellen send his guard to keep Lacal during the the night of the riots? I think so, yeah. So in theory, House Lacal and Ellen should be on good terms. Maybe the Kolos are going to help. Mm. But remember that the nobleman might not have taken it. The, Ellen was, was, was concerned about the people as well, not just the families, the noble families. So he might have helped the households of the Kol, but maybe the nobleman fled the actual family. So, but I, hey, I'm hoping that Justice is just uh, playing king until he until he gets to Ellen because he seems not to be very majestic. Yeah. I was saying, but look now. King Lacal, Justice snapped. Do I know you, Terrasman? We have not met your Majesty, but I have had some dealings with a friend of yours. I think King Ellen Wencher of Lucidel. Justice nodded absently. My men say the Kolos brought you. They found you poking around the camp. Yes, your majesty, Sazed said carefully, watching as Jostes began to pace. This man isn't much more stable than the army he apparently leads, he thought with dissatisfaction. How is it that you have persuaded the creatures to serve you? You are a prisoner, Terrasman, Jostes snapped. That's two snaps. Mm -hmm. No questions. Did Ellen send you to spy on me? Jostes, what happened to you? Mm -hmm. What happened to the... He's unhinged, boys. To the good, caring, philosophical, nervous fellow. He, he's, he, he hasn't dealt with change that much. He just wanted to, to LARP as a revolutionary, not actually be part of a whole revolution and things, okay? Hmm. No questions. Did Ellen send you to spy on me? I have a scent by no man. You happen to be in my pass. Your Majesty, I meant no harm by my observations. Jostas halted, eyeing Sazed before beginning to pace again. Well, never mind. I've been without a proper steward for some time. You will serve me now. I apologize, Your Majesty, Sazed said, bowing slightly, but that will not be possible. Whoa, Sazed just being based. He's like, listen, whoa, that's not how the world works anymore, son. Doesn't <laughs> like he's not exactly in the position to, to say that, but he's like, you know, it's not possible, sorry. Yeah, but also you can lie, Sazed. But no, no, it's you. You've got I, respect. Guts. Yeah, just as frowned. You're a steward. I can tell that from the robes. Is Ellen so great a master that you would deny me? Ellen Wencher is not my master, Your Majesty. Sazed said, meeting the young king's eyes. Now that we are free, the terrasmen no longer call any man master. I cannot be your servant, for I can be no man's servant. Keep me as a prisoner if you must, but I will not serve you. I apologize. <laughs> so <Yeah>. polite. <laughs> yeah. And I appreciate you sticking your ground. Mm -hmm. But, like, you have to give him a little something. Be like, I can advise you on a, on a topic or something right now while I'm here, but I do have places to go and things to see. Hmm. But he's, yeah, and it would be, because it would be very beneficial to have that kind of sway or whatever over this guy. But yeah, I mean, he just doesn't want to deceive either. He's like, no, I'll be a prisoner. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. But why is, integrity. what happened to you? Yeah. He has integrity and that is important. Justes stopped again. Instead of being angry, he simply seemed embarrassed. I see. There we go. 
There's goodness in him. I hope so. There's still a little bit of that child in him. Mm. And that kind of like, oh, things are different. So, yeah, because if he, yeah, the embarrassment, that's good. That's good. Yes. Your Majesty, I realize that you commanded me to ask no questions, so I will instead make observations. You appear to have placed yourself in a very poor position. I know not how you control these colos, but I cannot help but think that your grip is tenuous. You are in danger, and you appear intent on sharing that danger with others, just as flushed. Your observations are flawed, Terrasman. I am in control of this army. They obey me completely. How many other noblemen have you seen gather Kolos armies? None. Only I have been successful. They do not seem very much under control, your majesty. Oh? And did they tear you apart when they found you? Pummel you to death for sport? Ram a stick through you and roast you over one of their fires? No, they don't do these things because I commanded them otherwise. It may not seem like much, Terrasman, but trust me, this is a sign of great restraint and obedience for Kolos. I believe him. I do too. Mm -hmm. Look, I uh, do the, the tenuous, look, look, the, 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 the grasp is tenuous, but I would, he is still in control. The fact is that the fact, and that's just the way that the Kolos are, them killing each other and all of that sort of stuff. That's just how you keep, how they, that's Kolos, Kolosing. He's not going to stop them, <laughs> but he, he can he can tell them where to Kolos. That's that's his power. Yeah, I need to know more details before I can determine if he actually has serious command over them or not. Yeah. I think yeah, it's, yeah. It's yes and no. We need to we need to know more. Yeah, civilization is no great achievement, Your Majesty. Do not try me, Terrasman. Just as snapped running a hand through the remnants of his hair. These are Kolos we speak of. We can't expect much from them. And you bring them to Lucidel? Sazed asked. Even the Lord Ruler feared these creatures, Your Majesty. He kept them away from cities. You bring them to the most populated area in all of the final empire. You don't understand. I tried overtures of peace, but nobody listens unless you have money or an army. Well, I have one, and I'll soon have the other. I know Ellen's sitting on that stash of Atium, and I'm merely coming to to make an alliance with him. Okay. Sure, then you call yourself the king. I'm sure he believes that, but man, so mm -hmm. much for friendship, so much for all of their high-minded and lofty ideals in the first book, so yeah. much for Ellen sending his guards to go protect the Lacalls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it just makes me think of justice as a weak, weak, easily influenced by the situation to go against his supposed principles. Yeah, look, if anyone can just go out and gather an army and name themselves a king, I can appreciate why a person like Jostas might want to do that who wouldn't want to be a king of a certain dominance maybe we can share i suppose don't have to have the whole empire yeah i mean ellen certainly doesn't want to control the entire empire but if jostas did in fact try overtures and peace it does speak to both ellen and jostas's naivety we complained about it mm. a lot with Ellen and what those lofty high-minded ideals mean when you're dealing with opposing kingdoms rather mm -hmm. than rival houses. But Jostas certainly doesn't have, I think, Ellen's goodness. He's not as, or yeah. his, He's his not as steadfast as Ellen. Steadfast, that's the word, mm -hmm. yeah. An alliance where you take over control of the city? Bah! Jostas said with a wave of his hand. Ellen doesn't control Luthadel. He's simply a placeholder waiting for someone more powerful to come along. He's a good man, but he's an innocent idealist. Oh, well, here's what we were just talking about. <laughs> he's a good man, but he's an innocent idealist. He's going to lose his throne to one army or another, and I'll give him a better deal than Set or Straff will. That's certain. Okay, so Jostes knows what's going mm -hmm. on at Luthadel. Yep, but clearly Sazet doesn't. 
Set? Strath? What kind of trouble has young Wencher gotten himself into? Sazed shook his head. Somehow I doubt that a better deal involves the use of Kolos, your majesty. Justice frowned. You certainly are smart-mouthed, Terrasman. You're a sign. Your entire people are a sign of what has gone wrong with the world. I used to respect the Terrace people. There's no shame in being a good servant. Oh, sh easy oh. for yeah. the nobleman to say. Why don't you be a good servant then, sir? Serve your king, Ellen. Yeah, the king who saved you. <laughs> There's often little pride in it either. But I apologize for my attitude, your majesty. It is not a manifestation of Terrace independence. I have always been too free with my comments, I think. I never made the best of stewards. Or the best of keepers, he added to himself. Bah! Justice said again, resuming his pacing. Your Majesty, I must continue to lucid out. There are events I need to deal with. Think what you will of my people, but you must know that we are honest. The work I do is beyond politics and wars, thrones and armies. It is important for all men. Scholars are always saying things like that, Jostas said. He hesitated. Elland always said things like that. Regardless, I must be allowed to leave. In exchange for my freedom, I will deliver a message from you to His Majesty King Elland, if you wish. I could send a messenger of my own at any time. And leave yourself this one less man to protect you from the Kolos? That's convincing to me. I really, really mm -hmm. hope. I really hope that Jostas takes him up on it. Mm -hmm. It does seem like he doesn't have that many men. One does, uh, the loss of one does seem to matter. Yeah. Ah, so he does fear them. Good. At least he's not insane. That was funny because uh, we've just just left a chapter with the insane Zane. You know, yeah. It's just like, well, we 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 know insane. So yeah, and Jostas really only seems very stressed at this moment, not mm -hmm. totally yeah. insane. Although I would mm -hmm. argue it's more insane, I suppose, to trust a Kolos army than <laughs> to know you're insane and therefore not listen to the insane voices you hear. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Zane's better off. <laughs> <laughs> I will be leaving, Your Majesty. I do not mean to be arrogant, but I can see that you don't have the resources to keep prisoners. You can let me go, or you can give me to the Kolos. Also, I would be wary of letting them get into a habit of killing humans. Jostas eyed him. Fine. Deliver this message, then. Tell Ellen that I don't care if he knows I'm coming. I don't even care if you give our numbers. Be sure you're accurate, though. I have over 20,000 Kolos in this army. He can't fight me. He can't fight the others either. But if I had those city walls, well, I could hold off both other armies for him. Tell him to be logical. If he gives over the Atium, I'll even let him keep Luthadel. We can be neighbors, allies. One bankrupt of coins, the other bankrupt of common sense, Sazed thought. <laughs> Very well, your majesty. I will speak this island, and I will need the return of my possessions. The king waved a hand in annoyance, and Sazed withdrew, waiting quietly as the lead guard entered the king's chambers again and received his orders. As he waited for the soldiers to prepare, his pack thankfully returned to him, Sazed thought about what Jostas had said. Set our straff. Exactly how many forces were working on Ellen to take his city? If Sazed had wanted a quiet place to study, he'd apparently chosen the wrong direction to run. Yeah, we still need you to go to Luthadel. We still need you to tell them everything. So, yeah, it's not just a quiet place to study, I know, but we need you to get yeah. there. Hopefully um, he gets... I don't think they'll give him a horse. No, no, they <laughs> almost certainly won't. Yeah. But hurry, Sazed. And we have a little bit more knowledge of timeline. So they mm -hmm. are more or less in the same timeline. That's good yeah. to know. Mm -hmm. We do have that clarity now. Oh, no, you don't play with uh, <laughs> Kolos. You don't give a monkey TNT. Yeah, I don't know what we do with this. I don't know. I don't know how, how Ellen deals with this. I guess the, the, the closest thing is, yeah, okay, we're making some sort of deal with, with Justice, but it seems like Justice's control over the Kolos is something that can be broken. Yeah. That would probably be the best way to deal with it. But we don't have the time and resources to do that. So there's a lot to deal with. Yeah. 
either way uh what a scary chapter oh man yeah great um, great bland chapter to go through because we got we we got introduced to new creatures together so that's yeah cool. yeah and we've been waiting for colos for so long yeah oh and everyone's forgotten about them hello nobody has spoken about them <laughs> true so, so now, you know, now, and it's just, just another reason for Saze to hurry. But you're mm -hmm. a week's travel, basically. And he's got no speed, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay, I think that's mm -hmm. all we got for the moment. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you. Yeah. See you next week. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs>